Now, if y'all know me, y'all know this is the one that I've been waiting on. Who are the Baltimore Ravens going to select at the wide receiver position? They drafted Tez Walker from North Carolina. And maybe, just maybe, if Drake May had him all year, he would have went number two overall instead of number three. Team, keep it clean. We're here to talk about Tez Walker. We're going to talk about the ups, the downs, the highs, the lows, everything that he can contribute to the Baltimore Ravens in his first year and beyond. Before we do that, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you do not miss anything, and leave a like on the video because it helps both of us out a ton. He can come in and help the Baltimore Ravens out a ton. Lamar Jackson, y'all know he loves throwing a deep ball. And Tez Walker, he loves catching the deep ball. With him, when you look at his average from every collegiate year that he's had, and that's been the past three years, the first two at Kent State, this last one in North Carolina, he is it's either big play or not. That's all he does is big plays. That's it. Because his average is just crazy high. Let, and let's take a look at it. So his first year, the numbers, they're a little bit deceiving because – he only had five catches, 124 yards. He averaged 24.8 yards per catch. But again, that's five catches, 124 yards. That's a tiny, that's less than a sample size. The following year, though, is a lot more realistic because he had 58 catches for 921 yards, and he averaged 15.9 yards per catch. So almost 16 yards per catch. Uh, and he had 11 touchdowns, too. So what is that? Oh, production? Yeah, I love it. So then last year, when he was at North Carolina, he and, and he missed, I think he missed four games too, and we'll get into that in a little bit, but he caught 41 passes, 699 yards, and averaged 17 yards per catch. And he had a little old seven touchdowns. Yeah, that, that's good. That's actually great, especially for playing, in, and he played in eight games, had almost 700 yards, had about 700 yards. He was one yard short and had seven touchdowns. Oh, I'll take that all day. I'll take that all day. And you can tell with Drake May, when Drake May was throwing the ball, like Drake May, only, he, he looking for the big play, man, with him. He looking for the big play. And that's exactly what he will bring to the Baltimore Ravens, the big plays. And that's something that they could definitely use more of. You know, Lamar Jackson always looking for that big play, always looking for the chunks of yards. And Tez Walker is a perfect receiver to bring that to the Baltimore Ravens. You look at his frame. He's 6'3", they said he's 175 pounds, and when you look at him, he's tall, but he's a little skinny. I saw somebody say, oh man, he ain't gonna last, he's he gonna end up getting hurt. I'm like, what? Have you won? Do you not know the rules of the NFL, how they benefit the wide receivers like crazy? But then on top of that, are we not familiar with Devontae Smith? Or the Philadelphia Eagles, who, by the way, is on his second contract. Not for his second contract. Why? Because he came into Philly, first round draft pick, early draft pick, and he has made his mark with the Philadelphia Eagles for the past couple of years, and they rewarded him handsomely. And he's a smaller guy, small wide receiver, and he seemed to be doing just fine to me. So it's doable. When you look at Tez Walker, I think the, the real, realistic expectations that we could have for him coming to the Baltimore Ravens, um, I think him coming in and getting maybe like, I'll say about maybe like 300 yards, maybe 300, 350 yards. I think if he does that, then that will be a successful season uh, for him. Now, some of y'all might hear that and be, what? 350? That's nothing, man. But you got to think about the pecking order, man. You got to think about the depth chart right now. You got a Zay Flowers. You got Rashad Bateman. You got a Ty, uh, yeah, you got Tylen Wallace. Uh, you got Nelson Aguilar. I know I was forgetting somebody. Uh, you even got Deontay Hardy, too. So you got, that's five receivers off the top. Now, could Tez Walker leapfrog somebody like Deontay Hardy? He possibly could. Could he leapfrog Tylen Wallace? He possibly could. It all just depends on training camp. It depends on if he shows out or not. It depends on if those guys show out or not in training camp. So, so much depends on that. But even before we get to the receivers that come after Zay Flowers, after Rashad Bateman, even after Nelson Aguilar, you got to think about the tight ends. You think about Mark Andrews. That's one of Lamar Jackson's, if not Lamar Jackson's, favorite target. So you know he's going to get his. And hopefully this will be the year where they can incorporate Isaiah Likely into the offense, the same offense that Mark Andrews is a part of, and they can incorporate both of them at the same time and have success doing so, but we'll see. But you got Isaiah Likely as well, so that's yet another option, another target that will be way ahead of Tez Walker in the pecking order. You see, you, you see, you see why I said like maybe like 250, 300, 350 yards? That will be more realistic. And, and that would be, in my eyes, a, a successful season for Tez Walker because it ain't no shot at him. It ain't no shot at nobody. But 
you got to remember the people who are already there and who pretty much have their spots uh, solidified. What he can come in and do, um, he I don't think they would ask, yeah they wouldn't ask him to do anything crazy, but really just stretch the field, stretch the field, and that's his specialization. Ravens are not going to put too much on his plate in his first year, and he got some stuff that he could polish up on too. But this is a perfect opportunity for him to come in, maybe get like four or five plays a game. Maybe like two targets or something like that, two, three targets a game. It all just depends. I mean, you can't like go into every game and be like, all right, this game you're going to get two targets. This game you're going to get five. This game. It all just depends. But he could help stretch the field. He could help, help open things up for the other receivers when he's on the field, and they can help open stuff up for him. He has some very, very deceptive speed because when you're watching him run initially, it doesn't even look like he's running that fast, but it's probably because he got them long legs. And when people are long, they got them long legs, their strides, they look slower, but they're covering more ground. And with him, he got long legs and he's fast, so that's scary. That can be very scary. Because a cornerback could be looking at him and be like, man, this dude ain't even running that fast. But by the time that cornerback even gets that thought across his mind, Tez Walker behind him already. And that's exactly what we saw with Drake May to Tez Walker. We saw that connection. We saw, again, the deep ball. We saw he was so excellent at tracking the deep ball that was probably my favorite part about him how he tracked the deep ball how he just tracks the ball period and also how them sideline catches how he's he concentrates very much bringing that ball in bounds and getting both feet in and that's something obviously in the nfl i mean on a collegiate level too you got to catch the ball in bounds or else it don't count so in the nfl that will be greatly appreciated and then him just going up for the jump ball too. Him using all six, three of him and going up to get it. We could definitely use that with the ball. Oh, excuse me. Not definitely could use it. We will because why? We got him. Now, um, with his frame, he ain't going to be breaking no tackles. He ain't going to be breaking no tackles. And that's, that's fine. But that's just not in his game, at least not right now. In my opinion, I, I didn't really see him break tackles. Usually when I saw that first man make contact with him, they nine times out of ten, they ended up bringing him down. Um, but again, that's where the big plays come in. If he's behind you, then <laughs> you bring him down. You might, you might tackle him, cool. But he got like 20, 30 yard catch on you. So I mean, you got the tackle, but he got the big play. So that's what matters the most. Um, and again, that would be his specialty with the Ravens. Also, another thing about him, I just don't feel like he's very shifty. And that, with him being a taller receiver, a lot of tall receivers they are not shifty like that. Usually, it's the the shorter guys. But he ain't like shaking nobody or nothing like that. Um, as far as route running, uh, I think he, he was a solid route runner. Nothing too crazy. Um, but again, just his specialty, in my, in my opinion, was them go routes. Just go. Go go get it. Go get the ball. Go track. Hey, I'm going to put it up there for you. You come down with it. Oh, okay, I got you. Cool, cool. That's that. So I like this pick. I like the selection. Um, apparently, he went through some things. And shout out to my guy, uh, Spencer Schultz, for... Uh, bringing this out and highlighting this for us uh, a lot of the things that uh, Tez Walker has gone through uh, let's read it he said uh, Devon Tez Walker has faced a ton of adversity throughout his playing career he had to sit out his freshman year because he tore his ACL in spring of his senior year of high school that is terrible that sucked and that's like that 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 had to be like heartbreaking for him Especially the timing. That, that, that's the worst timing that you could possibly get. When I mean, injuries suck, period. But then the timing of injuries, they can make whatever injury you have a million times worse. You look at Keith Mitchell last year. He got hurt at the end of last year. So now that could possibly affect him this year. This is the same thing. He got hurt at the end of his senior year in high school, and that messed up his freshman year of college. It says he stayed home his freshman year to be around his family and worked at Bojangles to pay for rehab. He was the primary caregiver for his grandmother in high school after she had multiple surgeries. That's a lot of pressure for a young man. And remember, you got to think like um, we as as men, just as people in general, not even just men, but as people in general um, who are not playing football for a living, uh, who don't play college ball, whatnot. Uh, after high school, you might have gone to college or you might have just started working. But we tend to we mature differently than somebody who is a college football player and they spend all their time just playing football playing football playing football because depending on their situation uh they may not get to experience life like like a normal life because they so dedicated to football and whatnot so that's where all their time and their energy goes and whatnot so they don't get to grow up like a regular kid or a regular person or whatnot 
Um, so with him having all that responsibility, that's heavy. I mean, that's heavy on anybody's plate for sure. Uh, but especially somebody who may not have been out in the real world for too long like that. Um, but anyway, he said he committed to NC Central for the 2020 season, and they canceled their season due to COVID. Mm. It's tough. He rode the bench at Kent State for a year before finally breaking out in his second year there. He had a 100 yard game on seven catches against Georgia, uh, and that opened some eyes. He entered the transfer portal and chose UNC over Tennessee, over Penn State, and over other big name suitors to be close to his sick grandmother. That's respect. I respect it for sure. Uh, it says he was ruled ineligible to begin the season at UNC in 2023 because of an outdated rule. Uh, he served as a scout team wide receiver until he was finally ruled el eligible. Uh, then he averaged 100 yards per game for the Tar Heels over seven games in 2023. That was last year, of course. Uh, so that uh, he said mature and hard work are two of the things you'll hear about him time and time again, aside from his explosive downfield ability and ball tracking. OK, see, we, we on the same page with that one. For sure, because, again, we see it. And, again, when he tracks the ball, when he catching them deep ball, it, he makes it look so easy. Makes it look, like, flawless almost. But, anyway, um, he – this is fun. This is going to be a fun pick, man. This is going to be a fun pick for the right here, right now. Again, I ain't expecting him to come in and, and go crazy with it from jump. Even though if he does, we ain't going to complain. But he's somebody that the, – the, the contributions, they will continue to increase – year after year with nelson aguilar baltimore ravens they signed him to a uh, a one-year deal so he'll be a free agent after this season right now um he's sort of a placeholder for the baltimore ravens and that's that's what my guy jt called that was a, a a beautiful term for nelson aguilar he's a placeholder for the baltimore ravens at wide receiver right now until they get some things figured out uh, you got Zay Flowers under contract for the next four years because you got three years in a fifth year option. Uh, you got Rashad Bateman under contract for uh, through the 2026 season. Uh, so till 2027. Um, and now with Tez Walker, you got him under contract. Uh, well, when they officially signed, but he'll have a four year contract. So uh, you could think right. And we'll see. We'll see how stuff plays out. But Tylen Wallace, he is in the last year of his deal, I believe. Um, Deontay Hardy, he's obviously on a one-year deal. Um, but with Tez Walker, uh, he could have a much bigger role next year. I don't again, I don't think his role would be too significant this year, and I think it's not realistic to expect him to come in and just do so much for the Ravens this year, but really next year. So this this is a forward-thinking draft pick, and I know most draft picks are obviously forward-thinking, but they do do some right here, right now. But this is for the future. So I think next year is when we could see a significant jump in his production, just like he did on the collegiate level.